17. These are mostly the ones I've only covered chapter 16. We're going to take on that. I just want to keep it with the 16, 17 uh, facade, uh, but it uh, really just doing stuff out of 16. Um, but anyway, just to get just so we get a little bit more comfortable with it, the, the two problems we have tonight are 41 and 47. I like these two because these are similar to what you might find on the CPA exam. They tend to go a little bit deeper. They, they, you know, a lot of times they'll have you do a little bit extra stuff. Like, what, what is the total of this? What's the total of that? And that kind of thing. Whereas they do that a lot on the CPA exam, which is different than when I went through. When I went through, we had multiple choice questions. And then we had problems. And the problems were usually, you just do, you know, if they say you do a statement of cash flow, you do a statement of cash flow. That was it. You know, they didn't really ask you too many questions about it. Um, but now they kind of they combine those things. Anyway, let's pull up the problem. Uh, this is not right. Hold on. By the way, we're having, we're having thunderstorms here, so if the if it, if it goes out, I probably lost my power. Which actually is really irritating because our my power, the, the power goes out here. The it's gone out a couple times this year already. It used to never go out, but now it goes out and it's only for half the block. So you, you look out your window and everybody's lights are on, you know, and they're like half the block, like my half the block. Um goes out. So if it, if it goes out completely, if I just go blank, it's probably bad. Okay. So this is problem 41. Uh, I didn't do the spacing on this very well. I didn't do the punctuation on this either. Okay. <laughs> All right. So problem uh, 41, basically it's uh, year 2020. And they say no encumbrances were carried over from 2019. Sometimes they will be, sometimes they won't, but there aren't any, they say. And we have all these different kind of random things here. And we'll go through to the following page and see what they're asking for, and then go back and find the ones we need. So what is the budgetary fund balance for the year? Is it debit or credit? Well, the easiest way to do that is simply to do the, um, journal entry for it. So, oops. What do we need for, when we put the budget on the books, which accounts here are we gonna use? But what, when we put the budget on the books, what accounts do we use? I thought it was no entry for the budget. There is for fund accounting. So oh, this fund accounting. Okay. Okay. They should call it fun accounting because it's so wacky, but uh, it's fun accounting. Okay. <laughs> Isn't this where we use the encumbrance account? Encumbrance accounts are budget accounts. Uh, when we put the original budget on the books, though, when we estimate what our budget is going to be for the year, what accounts do we use? Is it the, uh oh, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. The uh, approved um, appropriations? Yep, that's one of them. Absolutely. There's only one more on here. Mm. 
Yeah, and so these appropriations, these are the estimated expenditures. They don't call it that for whatever reason, but. Is it the estimated revenues we would need to put down? Yep. Yep, those are the two. Those are two. And we would have estimated transfers out and that kind of thing. I, they aren't, I don't think there are any on here. These are the only two. So we have estimated revenue of 232,000. 232, and we have the appropriations, which are estimated expenditures of 225. So let me put those in. And again, weird thing about the budget, they go in reverse. It's almost, it's like a closing entry on the first day of the year. Revenues, if you ever, especially if you ever had me in a class, the revenues are always, always, always credits, but we're debiting it because it's almost like we're closing it out the first day of the year. Appropriations are for the expenditures. Um, uh, they uh, expenditures would always be debits, but this one we're crediting because it, it was two twenty five, wasn't it? I am blabbering and not thinking. Uh, so the appropriations for the expenditures are two twenty five, and the fund balance is just going to be a plug number, and it's going to be a credit of. Seven thousand. So this will be the budgetary fund balance. Oh, so they ask what it is for the year, and will it be a debit or credit? It's going to be a credit. And it will be seven thousand. Now, this does not go on any financial statement because this, this didn't really happen. But we will put it on the books. Okay, B is a consumption method, which I'm going to. We did a little bit with this before, but I'm going to. Do it a little bit more, um, a little bit more to the follow through to it. Okay, the school supplies are used during the year. Forty percent remain. Sweep from the supply. Uh, if the consumption method is applied, how is this okay? So consumption method. Yeah, I got to find these. Hold on. Here, paid for. Paid for supplies for our school system. Yeah, let's make that green. Okay, so the supplies. The consumption method, you put supplies on the books. And you say, wait a minute, we don't put assets on the books, our expenditures. The supplies are they're technically a current asset, so the you know, and while we have our current assets, so it's very common to have those on the books. So the supplies we'll put on the books for sixteen hundred. Not sure what they paid for it. Could be vouchers payable or cash. I said sixteen hundred, sixteen thousand. Okay, um, assume that 60% of the supplies are used during the year. Okay, I'm gonna add one more line here. So 60% are used during the year and 40% remain. Okay, so they'll, it'll look like this. Um, Sixteen thousand are you so fifty thousand times sixty percent equals some number. Oops. 
9,600. Yep. You guys got? Okay, so 9,600 was used. Okay, so this up here, uh, let me guess it going up. And down here, we're going to reduce our asset, the supplies. Now, in normal, in normal accounting, we would expense that. We'd say supplies expense or something along those lines. But in the wacky fund accounting, um, whenever we spend, whenever we spend uh, money, in this case, spending uh, an asset of supplies, what do we call it? Is it the general fund? Yeah, this would be in the general fund. So, what do we call it when we expenditure? Yep. Oh, expenditure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, those are just the expenditure. You may put on what it is. But as you use it, and this is very similar to what we do in regular accounting. The only difference in, in between this and say other types of assets is that most other types of assets are gonna be long-term. And so it's just gonna be an expenditure timing the books. Supplies is actually a current asset. So it, it doesn't really go against our grain to put that on the books. There are places that simply would just make an expenditure and forget about it. But um, if, if, they, if they are significant, a lot of times they try to keep track of that stuff. Okay. Sanitation truck was ordered but not received before the end of the year. The commitment will be honored, but um, in the subsequent year when the truck arrives, that reporting, what reporting will be, is made at the end of 2020. Usually they take off all the encumbrances, but they can sometimes leave them on the books if they are, um, yeah, our rights you know, put them back on the books, whatever. If they, if, once they have to remove, if they're going to, if they're going to keep those. So it looks like this is they're they're going to keep this on the books. So the sanitation, what what is it up here? Anybody's sanitation truck. I don't even see it up here. Oh, here, I'm sorry, here. New sanitation truck. Wow, those are expensive. <laughs> I guess so, they're kind of, uh, but, um, okay, so they're gonna keep this on the way. So what you would do, if you're going into the next year, so for instance, if you're going into 2021, you can put an encumbrance on for the previous year. Now, this is where it gets, it can be a, a little bit strange in that you can actually have an expenditure from the previous year recorded in the following year. So in the following year, this would be recorded as whenever it does arrive as an expenditure 2020, even though it's 2021 when they receive it. Um, yeah, that, and that's not all that uncommon to, to have happen, especially for something that, you know, that is going from year to year. Now, again, these are budgetary accounts though that we're gonna change here because actually, truthfully, a year end, nothing has happened. Right, I mean, it was included in the 2020 budget, this sanitation truck, but nothing has happened. So these are only going to be budgetary accounts. So you, you, if they took off the encumbrance accounts, you put it back on, but usually put it back on with a, uh, a different period. You know, the different date in this case, 2020. So if they took all the encumbrances off the books.
Okay, you just put the encumbrance back on the books. And I can't spell. I still can't spell. So you would put this on, and so this would go into the next year, and in that next year, um, when it came in, that would be considered an expenditure for the previous year. the previous period. Assume the new ambulance was received. Provide all necessary journal entries on that date. Okay, so we gotta look at the ambulance. Okay, so here we have the commitment to acquire the ambulance. Do we receive it? I think we did. Oh, yeah, we did. Wait, is this it? Yeah. I have an idea that I we have it here, but they did not pay for now. Ambulance received, but did not pay for now. Something looks funny about that. I don't know. Way about it made more sense if it said received ambulance, but did not pay for now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did something that was probably wrong. Okay, so they received it. We'll, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So they they made the commitment to re, to acquire it, and then they received it. it was one twenty when they got it? Uh, the commitments for a while out. Okay, so. Assuming they use the um, encumbrances, what would we have to do? Uh, take off our hands from the uh, commitment, oh. like uh, uh, encumbrance uh, outstanding will be debited for like 111K and the yep. encumbrance will be credited for the same amount. Yep, so we're, we're exactly right. We're taking our hand off the money for the 111 that we set aside for this thing. Yep. And again, we put our hand on the money so some muscles and sleep spend it. And what would we do down there? Now they said we didn't we didn't pay for it yet, or I think that was the gist of it anyway. But did not pay now. Yeah. So I assume that's gonna be about just payable. Uh, what's going to be on the other side? It's going to be like expenditure and plans. Yep. Exactly. It is kind of funny that we put, you know, school supplies on the books. But we don't put the ambulance. <laughs> But that's just the way it is. Yeah, there's no long-term stuff on them. And fun accounting. Oh, 
Okay. Prepare all journal entries that should have been made when the $33,000 transfer is made for the eventual payment of long-term debt. Okay. Um, let's take a look at that. 33,000. Okay, so that's this, I assume. Okay, so they're switching it from one to the other. All right, I'm going to split this up into two. You, you, you don't have to. You can put in the same, you, you know, you, somewhere in there. Right? I'm going to split this up into two because uh, we're going to have the ones from the general fund. So the general fund is sending them cash. So our cash is going to, the general fund's cash is going to be going down. Oops, wrong one. And what do we call it when we, send money to somebody else. Two, two. Uh, that's a good question. Did they actually send it to them? If they didn't send it to them, a do two would be what you put in there. This has made the transfer. So I'm assuming that they're, they actually sent the cash. Uh, it'll be uh, other... That's the financing use. And what do we call this? A transfer out or a transfer in for the general? Uh, transfer out. So be transfer out for the general fund. Now, the debt service fund. They get they they looking at it from the other end. So they got well. What would, what would theirs be? What would theirs look like? So the general fund sent them thirteen, not thirteen, thirty-three thousand dollars. So it's going to be like uh, other financing you use, transfer in, that's debited. Uh, it's going to be credited. See, because here's what's going to happen. Their, their cash is going to go up. So yep. their cash is going to go up. Let me put that in. Uh, yep. Yep. Oops, no, that's wrong. Hold on. Okay, that's right. So they're going to get 33000 and this will be other financing source to them. I know this is <laughs> cumbersome. <laughs> uh, transfer in. Kind of like a card game or something that you can memorize the rules for. But they, uh, yeah, so a use is when you send out money to, for somebody else to spend, it's a other financing use. It's kind of like an expenditure, but you're not actually expending it, you're giving it to somebody else to expend. So in this case, we're giving it to the debt service fund, the debt service fund's gonna spend it. The debt service fund, gets the cash and they say, oh good, other financing source coming in. So they're, they're, this isn't revenue. It's kind of like revenue to them, but it's um, coming from another fund. And yes, yeah, so if, if you had um, if you had actually, if they had made the commitment but not sent the money, this would be a general entry to say due to debt service fund. And down here they would say due from general fund. 
you know, when they actually receive the cash, then they'd make a, another round of journal entries. Okay, what journal entries did the city prepare for the issuance of the bonds? Okay, let's go see what happened with the bonds. I don't see it. Oh, here it is. I'm going to make that one green too. Receive cash from bonds sold for construction purposes. Okay. I'll leave it like that. So we got $3,000 bonds. I'll do the easy part. So they got the cash. Now, here's the thing about governmental accounting. We don't have long-term liabilities on the books. So it's not gonna be bonds payable. What account are we gonna use? So it's gonna be like a revenue for them, like other source it's similar to yeah, it's gonna be other financing source exactly it, it, it's similar it is similar to a revenue and we'll see that on the financial statement yeah and that's that, that's another one of the things that i think kind of get you know got uh Governments in trouble is that they could uh, they uh, would use bonds to balance the budget. It's kind of funny nowadays how you talk they talk about you know places the cities and stuff going bankrupt and all that. When I was going through, it was considered impossible for a city to go bankrupt. Said, well, no, they can tax because they can tax; they'll never go bankrupt. That was like the common thought. Uh, now they realize there's limits to that. You know, there's limits to what they can get and what they can spend, and you know, Illinois is a great example of it. But the, um, yeah, so, you know, the, the idea was, part of the reason why we, you know, they got into trouble was that there wasn't this accounting that was made to, hey, sometime you're going to have to start paying those things off. It was simply, hey, government government's going to tax people so they can never go bankrupt. And, and, and that was common, you know, that was a common thought. It was said all the time you know government can't go bankrupt now we know that they can okay good what amount of revenue should the city recognize in the period okay we got to go up here and find the revenues and this is this is typical of what you might find on a cpa exam question you know they give you all this big list what were the revenue okay Now, these be careful. These estimated revenues don't count. These don't really happen. So we're looking for real revenues. And if you see any, if you see any real revenues, let me know. Is it the 190,000? Yes. Very good. This is a revenue. Now, only the only for the amount that we're going to collect. So this is a revenue. Underline that too. And then the 14,000 for the uh, license and parking in meters. Yep. Oh, that's a revenue. This is a revenue. Not for the entire, I, I'm not going to highlight the 200,000 because that's not what they're going to count as revenue. But the 190,000. There's actually one more that's a little bit obscure. 
the grant received from the state? Which one? The state government grant, 24 k yes. Yep, yep, very good, excellent. Yeah, this is a grant. Now, if they spend it for what they're supposed to, uh, given for that purpose, so they, they, they spend it the way they were supposed to, this counts as a revenue. All right, so what do we have? 190 plus 14 plus 24. Right, I think you can remember though, three, three, three of them. We'll see. All right, 190. Do we put the full 190 on there though? Because it says that it's only 95%. Well, I think the 95% is 95% of the 200,000, which I think is, oh, okay. they, they, did, uh, they helped us out. <laughs> the CPA exam probably won, but uh, they, they did here. Okay, so this is, um, The tax revenue was this. Um, the uh, grant was twenty-four thousand. And what was the other one? It's like meters or something. Receive um, licenses and parking meters. Let's put that as miscellaneous. Licenses and meters. Okay, so this is thirty eight, uh, two twenty eight. I think it's two twenty eight. Okay, expenditures. Second. Okay, so expenditures. Um, well, the ambulance would certainly be one. Supplies. All right, let's go up here. Uh, so, what are we? What are going to be the um, expenditures here? Salary for police. What else? Will it be the 96 or would it be the 16 for the supplies? Uh, 9,600. 96. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this, um, that's excellent. 9,600 for this.
I gotta figure out a better way to do this. I'm just gonna copy them down here for now and transfer them down there later. Okay, so we got uh these two. What else? Um, the 3000 for like the invoices for rent on equipment, equipment by fire department. Now remember, expenditures are pretty much everything you spend money on. We got the pay for construction for City Hall. Yep, that's an expenditure. And the school bus. School bus, yep. Uh, where's the school bus? Here we go. There are at least two more. One we made the one we made the journal entry for. Ambulance. So the, that ambulance or the here. So the ambulance would be an expenditure. Ah. And then the one that's not so obvious, the ambulance are here, is the one that we actually got a revenue for. Notice this one. We only got that revenue. Now the entire grant was for forty thousand, but they only spent twenty four thousand. So the twenty four thousand will be an expenditure. It's also be a revenue that we already counted down there, but it'll be an expenditure. Okay, I didn't change that. Okay. Copy these all down here. I can't figure out a better way to do this. 
All right, so ah. I didn't realize there's that many expenditures. Okay. I'm going to take off all this high up here somewhere. Okay, so. Okay. Seems like too many to me. I got one million to sixteen six hundred. So one million to sixty one. Yeah, yeah. Two two million one six. Excuse me, guys. Two million. No, one million two sixty one. I was gonna write it. I can write it easier, and I can say it. All right, so that's what you got, right? Oops. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, let's stop here. We'll, we'll come back into this. We'll, we'll, hopefully, today, I don't think today's class will go. Well, I don't think it'll go the distance, but uh, we'll stop here and then we'll start on the next one. Break it up into two different. We'll say be back at 6.45. No, it is 6.45. 6, uh, so before you leave or walk away, can you bring it down just a little bit? What we I just... certainly will. Yeah, let me. Thanks. You know, I should check it to see if that is the. Uh, yeah, that's it. And two twenty eight. Yep, those are right. Okay. Good. Kind of funny, but then you, if you think about it, everything is an expenditure. <laughs> when everything's an expenditure, yeah, you do get a lot of expenditures.
Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started on problem 47. Now, problem 47, we're going to do some of the general entries, and then we're going to uh, make the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. So we'll do the general entries first. Now, this one is a little bit tricky. This is showing it at the end of the year. It says collect property tax revenue of 700,000. So this is the cash that was collected. Nope. Ah. Okay, so they collected uh, 700,000 in cash. The remaining assessment of 100,000 will be collected in the subsequent period. Half of that should be received within 30 days, the remainder approximately five months at the end of the year. Okay, so let's do the original journal entry. So if they collected 700,000 in cash and there's still 100,000 left to be collected, uh, what was the total amount of the taxes receivable? The 800,000? Yep. So the original entry looked like this, taxes receivable. Okay. Uh, the remaining uh, the remaining assessment of one hundred thousand collected in the subsequent period. Half that amount should be collected within thirty days. Okay, so half of it we will collect within the sixty day period. And the remainder will be approximately five months later. Okay, well, we're not going to collect that in 60 days. So half of it. So there's going to be a total that they're not going to be able to get, which would be um, it's, it's kind of like unearned revenue. Unavailable, I think. You know. And I think they're getting away from the uh, unearned because none of it's earned. Sometimes you see it called deferred revenue. I think that's the term I use usually, deferred revenue. Okay, and then the rest of this we count on it as revenue. Now we can do the, the tax, we can do the cash collection. The cash collection would look like uh, what? Cash is going up. $700,000. It's a receivable, it's an asset going down. Seven hundred thousand. Oops, that should be a comma, not a period. And so, right when we send out the tax bill, we count that as revenue. Okay. 
again, we, it's not earned. We generally don't say earned revenue. Professor, go over that with me one more time. Why well, I was thinking half of the eight. So they saying half of the hundred? Yeah. That amount, the hundred dollar. I mean the hundred thousand. It's not real clear. Half of the half of that amount. That the that I think is referring to this. Okay. A remaining assessment of a hundred thousand we collect in the subsequent period. Uh half that they're gonna collect in 30 days, and the other half in you know what I should look at the oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, that's what they do. It, yeah, it is. It's just a half of the um, amount collected in the subsequent period. You know. And so what they collected five months at the end of the year was the 750. Is that what it is? Well, it's a, they only collected 700,000. So what they're saying is the other hundred thousand. I think that you know that's probably the better way to say it. The, the other hundred thousand they, they they didn't collect during the year. The other hundred thousand they're going to get fifty thousand of it in within thirty days, and the remainder is going to be collected in about five months. Okay. I, I don't know how they came up with those dates, but <laughs> so, yeah. so they collected seven hundred thousand of it already. So the uncollected amount. Okay, um, this one is kind of a tricky one that they would put on the CPA exam. Uh, spends 200,000 on three new police cars. The anticipated price was 207,000 when ordered. Okay, so well, let's get our practice in. What do we do when we place an order in fund accounting? We get to use a fund, a fund in the order that's encumbrance. Yeah. So we got to take off the encumbrance off for um, encumbrance is outstanding. So we put it on the books at two hundred and seven thousand. Let's zoom in. <laughs> I find myself squinting. What am I doing? All right. Uh, and then we take uh, our hand off of the. Okay. It says that they spend. I'm. I'm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's for. Um, I'm gonna say they use cash. It could be a voucher's payable too. They're not clear on that. Okay. Wacky governmental fund accounting. What do we call it when we buy three new police cars? Okay, expenditure. Yep, expenditure. Okay. Um, my, my allergies are just killing me today. It's like uh, every spring is like this. <laughs> so expenditures. Now, when they say uh, they use straight line depreciation, they apply the half year convention, 10 year life, they expect you to divide it by 10 and then take half of that because. You know, some of your assets were bought halfway through the year. So on average, they do a half year convention. There is no asset. <laughs> There's no asset to appreciate. 
No, we don't do any of this. We don't do any depreciation in, in uh, fund accounting. And for good reason, we don't have any long-term assets. So we sort of like expenditure, we sort of like, we expense the whole thing right away. And we don't do it over 10 years, we do it immediately. Okay, uh, I'm splitting this one up. I should have split it up before I... Okay. Transfers, 900,000 of unrestricted cash at a debt service fund. So let's do the general fund first. And we'll do the debt service fund second. Okay, so what's the general entry going to be for the general fund? I'll do the easy one. Yeah, there's an asset going down by 90,000. Can it be a transfer out? Yeah. Financing use. Transfers out. And I guess I got to put 90,000 in there and make it balance. Okay. That service fund. I'll do the easy one here. Your cash is going up. It's got a transfer. Other finances is transferred in. Yep. And that's the response that pretty much everything is going to come to them in that form. You know, they just sit there and wait for the money to come in so they can make the payments on long-term debt. Another weird thing about the debt service fund, they generally don't uh, encumber anything. That everything that they pay is already set up to what they're gonna pay for the year. These are long-term, so they're gonna, um, they, they know what they're gonna pay off in the next year. So they, they usually don't encumber, they can, there's nothing wrong with it. Another thing that I, well, here's, here's a weird, I'll tell you a weird story that I, um, we had a, there was this kind of like halfway house for people that were released from prison and they would go to this halfway house. And the idea was if you put them back in their old neighborhood, they're going to start doing the same things again and in trouble in the first place. So they had this halfway house and that one of our, our um, the, the dean of business was uh, on the board of directors of this place. So anyway, they had, we had a student doing an internship there. And she was there, I think, two weeks. And this is a non-for-profit, which is similar to governmental accounting. But they, um, she was there two weeks. And the finance guy left. I think she met the finance guy twice in that whole time. So we really had an intern that was doing all of the accounting for this place. So they called me and they said, you know, can you go in and help? And I said, yeah. So I went in there. And they had a number of um, different finance people that, that were doing the books for this place. 
uh, over the last 10 years. I think they had something like five or six people that had actually come in and done it. It was not, it, there was, they had high, high turnover, whatever, for whatever reason in this position. It seemed like virtually everyone that came in used their own names for their own accounts. And so you had this legacy of you had, you know, you didn't have um, like one fund, fund balance account, you had 50 of them. Because everyone that came in set up their own fund balance account. Everyone that came in had their own way of doing things. And they had, we literally, it was kind of funny, we went through and um, they had something like 3,500 uh, accounts. And we went through and we just eliminated, I think the first day we eliminated something like 2,000 of them because you know, some of them were dormant, some of them, and some we had to figure out what they were because you know, okay, we have these five accounts that have money in them, but where do they go and all this kind of stuff. And But once we got it figured out, it wasn't so bad, but when you first looked at it, it was like, oh my God, what is this? You know, there, there's accounts everywhere. So we just went in. So my point being is that a lot of times, you know, you get into these situations where you might call something something a little bit different than they do or whatever. Um, and sometimes you go into these legacy things where you have just, like I said, in this case, we just had a whole bunch of people that came through and did it their own way, uh, every one of them, and then left. And the new person come in, you know, so you literally had these layers of different accounts. And they're basically all the same thing, but, you know, the wording was a little different and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, D. I do here. I must have got my space. Oh, I did get my spacing messed up because I did the. All right. Oh. Did they give me enough room? Nope. Now let's go to the next page. Okay. Uh, issued a long term bond for $200,000 face value. July 1st, interest at 10% annual rate would pay each year starting June 30th, 2021. Okay, I'm assuming that this takes place in the general fund. Okay, I'll do the easy part. Our cash is going up. Is it revenue for 200,000? Close. Um, yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I'm just, I know it's not bonds payable. Uh, bonds payable. Is it something yeah. revenue? You know, it's, it's going to be a other financing source uh, bonds, but it is counted almost like a revenue. We'll actually we'll see that. You know, there is the there is basically there are rules on making a um, a balanced budget, but those rules can include long term debt to finance short term usage, I should say uses. Okay. <clears throat> Orders new computers with a five year life. What's the wacky budget accounts we use? Oh, it's encumbrance uh, and then encum encumbrance outstanding for 40K. Yep. And again, there is, you, know, you won't see me put down that this is for an asset increasing or anything like that. This is not a, an account 
that actually goes on anything. This is a budget account. This is to tell people don't spend this 40,000, it's already spent. Pay salaries of 30,000. Another 40,000 is owed to employees at year end, but will not be paid for another 30 days. Okay. So they paid for 30,000 of their salaries and there's still 10,000 that they owe. So what kind of a entry are we gonna make? That'd be expenditures and cash. Yep. Expenditures. 30,000. Go ahead. I was going to say, and then encumbrance for the last two for uh, the 10,000. Uh, this actually has already happened. So this oh, is it's already. Okay. So what is it when we owe somebody? Now, this is. This is not between funds. This is owed to employees who are not governments. So we are still going to have expenditures. Uh, so this will be expenditures. If you want to put down salaries, that's fine. So we're going to have expenditures for salaries. And this kind of goes back to just regular accounting. If you owe somebody, what kind of account is it? Oops. Probably just gonna be payable, some kind of a payable, salaries payable, something like that. And this is a current liability. And it's not gonna be a long-term liability. So this is a liability going out. You pay in the next 30 days. Okay, the new computer comes in. Encumbrance, outstanding encumbrance. Yep. And again, this is really there. Those accounts really just stand in there for um, to, 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 to let people know that you got your hand on the money. So it's 40,000 we put on the books for, and we'll take our hand off for it. Okay, and I assume they bought this from some non-governmental place. The extra cost was $41,000 payment just to be made in 45 days. So they haven't made the payment yet. Okay, so what's the journal entry gonna be? Spend your uh, computer for 41K and watch your payable computer for 41K. Credit. Yep. Expenditure, if I could spell it right. And spend expenditure, um, I can, uh, computer, right? Uh, professor, uh, sorry to interrupt, but wouldn't you get rid of the second outstanding in the sent in that? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh... Thank you, yes. That would be a little silly, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, so it comes outstanding. Uh, yeah, 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 I was reversing this. Thank you. And again, that's kind of put, taking your hand off the money. And people say, well, why do you do that? Uh, well, you do that because you don't want people spending it. Yeah, it looks like uh, you know, a waste of time. But OK, and we haven't paid for it yet, so it's probably be vouchers payable.
uh, liability going up. Oops. Uh, supplies, I think it said somewhere up here. Uh, no. So, yeah, yeah, here. Cash. Consumption method. The consumption method. There is a purchase method that where you expend, uh, the whole thing's an expenditure. Um, I, I, I tend to go with the other one just because it's, it's more of what we would normally see. And especially nowadays when we do the government wide. Uh, I supplies and then cash? Yep. Good way to say it in cash using cattle or whatever all right so cash going down uses supplies Bought in G. Uh, use the 8,000 supplies. So, what are we going to do with that? Uh, I'll do the easy part. Supplies are going. It, is it expenditure and supplies? Yep. Yep. And yep. That's it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make our statement. So from the journal entries we just did, we're going to make our statement of revenues, expenditures, and other changes in fund balances. And yeah, so we'll go through. Let's find our revenues. Okay, here's revenue. I think that's it. Okay, so It must be because I only got one. I only got one row here. <laughs> that must be it. Uh, okay, so uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Expenditures. We have a bunch of those. Let's see. The police car. But two hundred thousand. Yep. So oh, expenditure on the police car. I'm very happy that. Hey, I can. 
Uh, okay, so we have the police car. Uh, we had both the salaries. I don't know. All right, um, let's go, oh wait, your expenditure. The computers. Yep. And then supplies. Yep. Wait a minute, I didn't put those in. What was that, 41,000, I think? And the supplies were eight, eight. All right, I'm going to add a row in here. I'm just going to get the total here. So total expenditures. What was that up to? 289. 289. Yeah, 289. All right, so now these are money, this is money going out. I don't put a negative in front of that. Um, so 750 minus 289. Four sixty one, four hundred sixty one thousand. All right, so this is our excess of revenues over expenditures. So we have more revenues coming in than we have expenditures. And again, you know, you look here, everything's an expenditure. Police cars are expenditure, salaries, computer, supply, everything. Okay, other financing sources and uses. Uh, we're only doing the, I think this is the general fund. I'm, I'm going to make the assumption this is for the general fund, you know, because there's only a couple entries for like the debt service fund. So we're only gonna do this with the general fund. Okay, so the uh, general fund, let's see here. Other financing use transfers out. I'm gonna put that as a negative. Uh, other financing source. <laughs> I don't like it. I mean, I gave, you know, Generous amount of room for this one, but I shorted the expenditures. I'm not sure why. Okay, so this was uh, other phrase. Uh, what is that? Positive 110. I'm going to put this as a plus.
Okay, so the change in fund balance. So this is uh, 461 plus 110, 571. I think that's it. Uh, beginning fund balance. I remember seeing it. It was 180. 180? Okay. So 180 plus 751. Oops. Yeah. So let's be our ending fund balance. And again, you notice though, you know, like for instance, the one thing that really sticks out. This is <laughs> this is a long-term liability. Yeah, you know, and it's on, you know, this is basically the fund accounting income statement. And there's a bonds payable on it, you know, but to them, it's just, how do we get money in to cover these expenditures? Um, that doesn't say what this was for, but uh, yeah, it shows up almost like a revenue, you know, it gets added in just like a regular revenue up here gets added in, this gets added in. So it's kind of a different way of thinking. It's like, how are we going to cover these expenditures? And, you know, it, if you have to sell bonds, you have to sell bonds. Okay. Well, very good. You know, I should probably check if that's right. <laughs> uh, yes, that is the right answer. I have a quick question, Professor. So they still paying the interest on these bonds? Is that what it's saying? 10%? Yes. So what would happen is, so yeah, they, they do pay off these bonds. It isn't that they're completely irresponsible and never pay them off. Uh, what they do though, is they do this. This is how they pay it off. Every year they'll say, how much do we need to cover what we have in our debt long-term uh, um, debt you know, that we have to pay off? And that is the amount that they'll make arrangements for, for transfers out to go into the debt service fund. So, okay. So part of the budgeting will be for other financing uses, you know, estimated other financing uses transfers out. How much do we need to cover our bond payments or long-term liabilities? But here's another weird thing, though. The debt service fund, you say, well, does the debt service fund have the long-term liabilities in it? Nope. It, it's another checkbook. It mm -hmm. writes the checks for them. It keeps track of everything. He's track what they need to pay, but there actually is uh, usually a listing of long-term debt. That's a separate. It used to be optional. I don't know if it still is. It used to be an optional uh, report of listing of long-term debt um, that you can look at and see what you know, see how much they owe. But uh, there actually is no long-term debt in the debt service fund either. This is a checkbook. They get cash in. They uh, pay out for the long-term liabilities. Now, you know, nowadays, having a listing of the long-term debt is probably not that big a deal because the government-wide accounting is going to have those on there. It's going to have all your long-term debt, <coughs> excuse me, and then the notes are going to have a listing of all of it in there. But uh, before they had the government-wide accounting rules, you know, where it's kind of more like regular accounting that we're used to, um, yeah, you had to go digging to find what was actually owed. You, you wouldn't find it in the funds themselves. The funds themselves were just checkbooks. All they had was cash. 
So did they record uh, journals for entries for those payments? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll 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 pay the um, the debt service fund. That's how they would pay it the same way for that ninety thousand. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah. The debt service fund. Yeah, they make the payments out just like you know they know you normally you normally would. Um, but yeah, it it it, it was kind of it, it was they were still just checkbooks. And, and, you know, like I said, for years, people thought, well, you really don't have to know that kind of stuff because governments can't go bankrupt. You know, they, they're they responsible. They know what they're going to pay. They can pay a lot of that. Uh, it was never thought of that, gee, there's a limit to that. You know? And it was the same thing for countries. People thought the countries couldn't go bankrupt. You couldn't have countries that would go bankrupt. It was, it was, it was kind of funny because it was just like common knowledge back then that, look, governments cannot go bankrupt. You know, that was what everyone was you know, it's, a, it's normally talk about, but uh, now we know that's not exactly right. So anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, any question on that? <laughs> wacky way of accounting, but uh, it, it, it and it kind of it does its purpose. It does its purpose that it does keep track of a budget. You know, and that's really what you know they were really worried about was you have this legal budget that you have to have. And how do you make sure that you're on track for that? So, you know, it's wacky. It's there. There is a use for. There's a reason for it. We put it that way. Okay. Um, any questions? All right. Well, next week. Oh, you know, I should bring that back up. So next week, um, uh, we'll do the practice exam for chapter sixteen and seventeen, and then the last test, and that will be due. I think the last day of the term is Monday the 8th. So that would be where that one would be due. Uh, I might put it in as that Friday, but truthfully, Monday the 8th is when it would be due. So now I'll send that out next week. And then, so week 16. So next week is week 15. We'll go over what's going to be on the final. I'll send it out. Week 16 is the last week. I'd like to leave that open in case there are questions on stuff. It's not required. It's not a required meeting. I'll be here. Um, if anyone shows up, uh, I'll be happy to, you know, go over anything you want to go over. But week 16, I'd like to, I'd like to leave that open just in, case, in just in case there are questions. It could be questions on anything. It could be questions on the last test. It could be questions, whatever it is. But anyway, uh, that last week we is, is an optional class. I will be here. Um, it's it's optional for you if you want to come to uh, if you have any questions on anything. Any questions? <laughs> any questions about that? Oh, good. Thank you so much for the update. No, professor. All right. <laughs> have a good evening. You do. Thank you. Well, have a good evening. Someone didn't want us to have.